Okay, in this video I'd like to show you how to normalize your second wave function for your quantum linear harmonic oscillator in one dimension. So the, the second wave function is actually u1 of y, and we found out the unnormalized wave function for u1 of y was equal to 2y times e to the minus y squared over 2. That's our unnormalized wave function, okay? So because we're normalizing this, we can just say that we'll say a times, um, a times y times e to the minus y squared over 2. And we need to normalize it, and we know that the condition for normalization of a wave function is the integral from negative to positive infinity of the complex conjugate of your wave function times your wave function integrated, and say in this case we're just going dx because we have one dimension. And we know that must equal to 1. That means, of course, that the particle must exist somewhere in space. The problem here, of course, is this is integrating dx, and we made a change of variables from x to y earlier on. So what we need to do is just take into account of that, uh, and we, the change of variables we made is that y is equal to m omega over h bar square rooted times x. So how do we get the how do we get our scaling factor? Well, if we get dy dx, or well, I know I'm drawing dels, but anyway, that's just going to be m omega over h bar rooted. All right, that means basically that del, del x is equal to h bar over m omega rooted times uh, or del y or dy, we'll say. All right, so that's that's our scaling done. So let's just plug those into our equation and let's see what we have. So we have the integral, or we'll say a squared, because we've multiplied by the complex conjugate. But in this case, the complex conjugate, there is no, we'll say, complex part, so it's just itself. So we get the integral from negative to positive infinity of e to the minus y squared over 2 times e to the minus y squared over 2. And that's going to be multiplied by h bar over m omega rooted and dy. And this is just going to be, we'll see, we're, we're multiplying two exponentials, so that's the same as adding their powers. So it's just going to be e to the minus y squared, like so. Okay, and this is, an actu that's a, this is a contour integral. So look, ask your mathematician if you want to know how to do it, but it's a, it's a very well-known one. I'm not sure, is it i0 or is it i1? But it's one of these contour integrals. Um, you might even, if you want to search in, on the internet, look maybe up, look up Gauss's integral. Anyway, the answer to this, this will say just this equation here is uh, square root pi over 2, is it? Let me think. Actually, wait, we have a y squared. Why do we have a y squared? We have a y squared here. Okay, so I missed my y squared. There's my y squared there. So this, yeah, and yeah the, the answer to this is square root pi over 2 like that. So that means what we're left with is a times the square root pi over 2 times the h bar over m omega square rooted. And that's it, that's equal to 1. So let's just rearrange this. We're going to get a is equal to m omega times um, divided by h bar. And the pi is there as well. That's square rooted. And your 2 is up here. Like that, that and that's a squared. All right, and am I missing something here? Why is there a 2 there? No, that's correct. Okay, so therefore a is equal to m omega over pi h bar to the quarter times root 2. Alright, and finally then, that means it's your normalized u1 of 0, or u1 of y, excuse me, is equal to m omega over pi times h bar to the quarter multiplied by root 2 times y squared e to the minus y squared over 2. Alright, so that was pretty straightforward stuff. Thanks for watching, please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.